Now I want to extend our discussion of discrete mass distributions into two dimensions. All right, so we start with the same idea of a discrete mass distribution. We have n masses, all of mass m1 through m sub n. And now they're at locations that are described by the vectors r1 through rn. And those vectors are now in, in, uh, in a two-dimensional plane. So now as we go to our discussion of the, the total mass, center of mass, and moment of inertia, our total mass is defined the same way as before. Our total mass then is just equal to the sum over all of our objects, the individual masses. Okay, the center of mass now in two dimensions is also a vector, just like our locations are vectors. So the center of mass vector is equal to one over the total mass sum over all of our objects uh, m sub i r sub i the vector quantity okay. and now our moment of inertia that we can calculate moment of inertia is given by the sum over all objects m r sub i squared. Okay, but we have, we have to qualify this. What moment of inertia here are we talking about? This is the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the two-dimensional plane uh, through the uh, origin, zero, zero. Okay, so that's, it's important to uh, qualify exactly what we're talking about. So we have a distribution of masses in a two-dimensional plane. This gives us our total mass, this gives us the center of mass in that plane, and then this moment of inertia gives us the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to that two-dimensional plane. So here's my plane, and here's my origin. So let's say I have all my individual masses that are fixed relative to each other, right? I, I think that that's important. They're at fixed locations, so they're also fixed relative to each other. And then, given an axis perpendicular to that plane that goes through the origin, then this quantity gives us the moment of inertia for the rotation of that rigid object where they're fixed relative to each other rotating about that axis. Okay, so that's simple enough. So let's do an example. All right, so here's my two-dimensional plane, plus x and plus y, and I have three objects Let's, uh, I have one object up here, it's of mass 3 kilograms, and it's at the location 1, 8. So it's 1, 8, let me put it up here. And now I have a, uh, another object that's, um, let's, down here, this is of 5 kilograms and it's at the location negative 2, negative 4. And now I have um, another object up here of 3 kilograms, and it's at position uh, positive 3, negative 3. Positive 3 in the x, negative 3 in the y. Okay, so let's calculate my mass, center of mass, and moment of inertia. Okay, the center of mass, uh, sum over all the masses, that's easy, 3 plus 5, oh, a 2, 2, 2, 2. I want one of these to be 2. This one was 2. Right, sorry, this was 2 kilograms at 3 minus 3. So uh, 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10 kilograms. All right. 
So next, I want the uh, center of mass. Center of mass. So this is equal to 1 over the total mass sum over all the objects R sub i, M sub i. Okay, so that's equal to 1 over 10. I'm going to give myself a big bracket here. Uh, the mass of my first object is, is 3 here, and its position is 1 i hat plus 8 j hat. Okay. Plus my second object, which I'm saying is this one, that's 5 kilograms times its vector position, minus 2 i hat minus 4 j hat, all in component form. And then I, my, my third object is over here, so this is plus 2 uh, kilograms times 3 i hat minus 3 j hat. Okay, and so um, I'm going to add all these together. This is 1 over 10, so add my x components, so that's 3 minus 10 plus 6. So that looks to be minus 1 i hat, so 6 plus 3 is 9, minus 10 is minus 1. And then the y component, I have a, uh, a positive 24 here, uh, minus 20, I guess that's a positive 4, uh, minus 6, so that gives me minus 2 j hat if I add all my y components together. And so then multiply through by 10, and this is minus uh, one tenth i hat minus uh, one fifth j hat is the vector for my center of mass. Uh, so, so where is that exactly? I guess that's it's very close to the origin on the the scale. I sort of got a pretty balanced distribution of masses here. It it uh, is out. Um, towards the negative uh, one-tenth and, and two-tenths, and so my center of mass is very close to the origin, 0.1 on the negative x and, and x and 0.2 on the negative y. Okay, this is meters now, center of mass and units of length. I have kilograms and, and my axis is in meters. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, calculate the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia about... Uh, Another one about an axis that's oh, axis going through the origin perpendicular to the surface. So say it's out of the out of the page, out of the board here. All right. So the the moment of inertia about that axis is equal to the sum over all my particles uh, r squared um, i m sub i. And here, if it wasn't uh, obvious to us before, I mean, r sub i uh, here has to be the magnitude of the the position vector. So we have to find the magnitude of each vector. Well, we can do that here. the The magnitude of one, which is well, let's let's calculate r squared r squared of each vector is just x squared plus y squared, so that's 64 plus 1 is 65. And r2 squared then, if this is my my mass 2, is 16 plus 4, so that's 20, and these are meters squared, meters squared if we care. And r3 squared then is is 9 plus 9, which is 18 meters squared. Okay. So that allows us now to calculate our moment of inertia. I then is equal to the mass of 1, 3 times its uh, distance from the origin squared, which is 65, plus the second mass 5 times its distance to the, from the origin squared, 20, plus the third mass 2 times its distance from the origin squared, which is uh, 18. And now we just have to, to do the arithmetic. I get this to be 195, uh, 136. Again, that, that uh, 
the mass, of course, makes for a larger moment of inertia contribution, but getting far away, um, that, that R squared has a significant contribution. I, I add all those up, I get 331. This is now kilograms meters squared. This is the moment of inertia about an axis uh, going through the origin. Again, let's go ahead and, um, well, we're not going to calculate through the center of mass. We can do it through this the same way if we want to. Remember, if we want the, the center of mass, then it's just the moment of inertia uh, through the origin. Um, plus the the mass times the um, magnitude of the center of mass uh, squared, because that's the distance away the, the uh, sorry, minus, of course, minus the, the distance of the moment of inertia um, at the origin, the moment, the distance between these two axes. Okay, um, I, I will take a m minute just to point out that this is in um, uh, two dimensions. This is rotation in a plane, or rotation in a plane. So I have all my um, objects in a plane, and they're rotating in that plane. Um, the problem is you cannot uh, generalize uh, I to 3D in this way. So we are only going to stick with rotation in a plane. The problem is in three, I keep saying the problem, <laughs> in three dimension, in three dimensions I is a not a scalar quantity in 3D. In three dimensions where you have an arbitrary rotation, I is not even a vector. It's a tensor quantity. So it could be represented by a, um, a three by three matrix to in, in three dimensions for an arbitrary three-dimensional rotation. So since that is beyond the scope of our introductory physics course, we are not going to get into arbitrary three-dimensional rotations. And so everything that we've done here is limited to two-dimensional mass distributions and rotations in a plane.